planting churches in the mission field, remember all those principles. Priesthood of all believers, every believer is a minister. Every disciple should be making disciples. Every leader should be reproducing leaders. Every church should be planting churches. No? And then very basic skills, you have to teach your people also. So you're in the mission field, you, you, you share the gospel, somebody received the Lord, you need to train them how to share the gospel. Secondly, you need to show them how, it's, how to make disciples, no? because they can, they can see that in you, then they will do the same thing. And then they will be uh, involved in your team to be planting churches. No? So anyway, so let's continue. Well, uh, for us Filipinos, we believe that uh, we have also a, a missionary call. No? Uh, they call it, our evangelical leaders call it the prophetic destiny of the Philippines as a missionary sending nation. And this is because of the overseas Filipino workers phenomenon, OFWs. Uh, it is believed that the Filipinos is the most scattered race in the world today. Because, yeah, because Chinese and Koreans will only go to places to do business. So when businesses will be okay, then they start uh, business, they go. But Filipinos, when, wherever jobs are available, they go. Yeah, so they, they, they go to work overseas. So at least 12 million uh, on the record, but we believe more than that. Uh, only POEA says all, all 12 million plus. Uh, Philippine Overseas Employment Administration. Uh, but many, for example, in, in Thailand alone, there are about 14,000 Filipino teachers. <laughs> yeah, 14,000 Filipino teachers in Thailand. And many of them have not passed to government. They, they, they just go there and direct, hi direct hiring. So they are not illegal actually in Thailand. They are legally working. But they did not go through recruitment through the agencies here. No, so that's why it could be uh, 15 million, 12 to 15 million Filipinos living and working overseas. So because of this, uh, we are seeing that God is using them also in an amazing way. That's why we call, I call this the Filipino Missionary Mandate. We want to pursue our call as a missionary sending nation. No, and uh, it's very interesting because Paul Mission had been established here to send missionaries to the nations. The, over a year ago, actually in the Brazil, uh, the, the Southern Baptist in Brazil, their mission board came here and met me in my office and uh, they were telling us that God is leading them to use the Philippines as a launching pad to launch missionaries in, China, uh, in, in Asia. So all the missionaries that they will be sending from Brazil that will be going to, China, uh, to, to Asia, actually, of course, including China, will go to the Philippines for eight months. So eight months training. Uh, uh, four, four months will be for English, and then four months will be for uh, you know, learning more about Asian culture through Asian professors. So I connected them to the different seminaries here in the Philippines and other organizations, uh, especially working among the Muslims to, to help their missionaries prepare for uh, Muslim areas. But anyway, um, we, we really believe that we have a special call to be sending more missionaries. Uh, we can do that alone or we can, we can actually do that in partnership. But the best is in partnership. Well, we are Filipinos and just to encourage Filipinos, we, we tell them, that pili means pinili. Pinili means chosen, actually. And pino means refined. So we say we have been chosen and refined by God. That's why God will really use Filipinos in an amazing way in the mission field. So you have been chosen and refined by God. So God expects you to, to apply those principles no? uh, that we are learning in the mission field. Our goal is that our overseas Filipino workers will become outstanding Filipino witnesses. One of my favorite verse, Habakkuk 1.5. The Almighty God says, look, look at the nations and watch, and be utterly amazed, for I'm going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you're told. God is doing amazing things in the world. And, and those that I shared earlier are amazing things. How can you see, you know, 
uh, eight, I mean, 80,000 plus churches, 4 million baptized in just a matter of 20 years. How can you see uh, the growth from 1 to 5 million in, in just a matter of 8 years in, in China? No, and all of those uh, that we have been talking about. And those are just part of the many movements that's happening. So again, God desires us to be part of a movement, not a monument, okay? So when we start a church, it should be a movement. When we start ministry, it should be a movement. So God's royal priest at work. You're a royal priest, okay? So I, I, just to encourage us, especially the Filipinos, would you believe that 30% of all seafarers in the world are Filipinos? For every three seafarers, one is a Filipino. But, but what is very interesting here is that the ship captain, who is uh, the Filipino ship captain, who is a believer, said, I'm not just the captain of the ship, but I'm also the evangelist here. Amen. I am the disciple maker here. Then eventually I can see a church planted here. So what happened? As a result, we now have almost 300 churches on the ocean. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we have floating churches. Because they call it floating churches. So we have churches based, uh, planted, uh, land-based churches. We have uh, floating churches. In fact, one Christian pilot was making a joke. We are also thinking how to plant a church in the air. <laughs> you know, uh, always talking about church planting. But anyway, this guy, uh, Tas, the, this uh, uh, guy, uh, he has his book actually once an Arafat man he has he's a PLO guy Palestinian Liberation Organization guy uh, this is the the most notorious terrorist group before now it's the ISIS right but before it was the PLO Yashir Arafat no? and you know this guy uh, instrumental for him coming to Christ is the Filipino nanny actually yeah. so I, I, I don't have time to look at work on details but there's that book, you can buy it on Amazon or eBay, Once an Arafat Man. Well, maybe over free time we can talk, but I don't have time for details in this session. But it's amazing how God used a Filipina nanny no, to influence her to Christ. This is a testimony of one a Saudi lady who is now a believer. You know, I have a Filipino housemaid. She sings all the time and looks so joyful. I asked her what she was saying about... And she explains he was singing songs of praise and thanksgiving to God for Jesus. I asked her to tell me more about him and to her witness, I became a Christian. And she said, my husband became a Christian. And all my children became Christians. And many of my friends and relatives became Christians because of our Filipino housemate. This was actually uh, reported in the website of John Piper. So it's not me just giving this report. This was documented by the Lausanne movement. And no other than the CEO, uh, Michael O, uh, who is uh, an American, Japanese, Korean, three nationalities, that's why they have chosen him. <laughs> so he can raise resources from America, from Korea, and from Japan. No? Very, very wise moon. <laughs> but yeah, uh, he was the one who reported about this. Well, God is using Filipinos in the Kingdom of Bahrain. God is using Filipinos in Qatar. This guy works with Emirates Airlines before, and it's very interesting. He said that our Qatari friends get sick. In spite of medical advancements, they don't get healed. But when, you know, they see Filipinos, they say, I know you're a Christian. I know you're a Filipino. You're a Christian. Can you pray to your God to heal me? And God just worked wonders. And that opened doors for them to talk about, you know, Christ and, and who He is. This is uh, one of the gatherings we had in Hong Kong. 856 we gathered them uh, we heard stories how the whole buddhist family how the whole atheist family came to know christ through the filipina nannies and housemates and praise god by the end of the day 116 went to the altar making a commitment to christ lord use us as well in macau i met this lady she was instrumental the whole buddhist family where she works as a housemaid are now believers wow. and they are now attending one of the chinese churches in macau in Singapore, uh, here is uh, Mr. Wong. Mr. Wong is a Singaporean. Uh, Stanley is a Singaporean also. He's a missions mobilizer. So when Stanley learned I'm going to Singapore, he said, I will make arrangements for you to meet Mr. Wong. No? 
Uh, by the way, that's my wife. I brought my wife in this trip. And uh, I asked uh, Stanley, why do you want me to meet Mr. Wong? And he said, I want you to meet him because Violi, the one with long hair, their housemaid, had been serving the, the Wong's family for 27 years. So anyway, we visited and uh, we were waiting for Mr. Wong. I asked Violi, Violi, what did you do? She told me, Pastor, for the last 10 years I've been praying for Mr. and Mrs. Wong that they will come to know the Lord. Secondly, I also pray that we can build our church back in the Philippines. We have a very small church. We want to have a bigger facility. So what happened? After 10 years of praying, Mr. Wong got sick. And the doctor said he is going to die. <laughs> so that's the answer to the prayer. Don't let me only pray for you. <laughs> anyway, but that was the open door. So Bioli tell Mrs. Wong, Ma, can you tell Mr. Wong to give me permission to pray for him? Because I know if I pray for him, my God can heal him. What a faith. I said, oh, I may not be able to say that if I'm in her place. But looking at 10 years of prayer, if she prayed for 10 years consistently, she believed God will really answer her prayer. Because she could have stopped on the fifth year. And she could say, oh, this family hopeless. He stopped praying for them. No, but no. She believed by faith that God brought her in that home, in that workplace, so that God can use her to be a blessing. So she began praying. And kept, kept praying for 10 years. And of course, prayed for Mr. Wong. And when we visited, I just realized that Mr. Wong was diagnosed to die 10 years ago. So he already lived for 10 years. Because of the prayers of Yoli. So what is important is they came to know the Lord. And so Mr. and Mrs. Wong, by the way, they are architects, both of them. They have a construction company, a big one. 80 workers in their office. I'm a civil engineer before I became a pastor. So we were only 12 in our office, engineers and architects. We have a lot of projects. So when you say 80... Oh, that's a big one. So, Mr. Wong was very happy. No, uh, he was like restored to health and then uh, came to know the Lord. So, he commissioned several of his engineers and architects to go to the place of Bioli in gratitude. No? So, he funded the rebuilding of the church 23 million pesos. Oh. Mr. Wong paid for everything. <laughs> so that's the church on the right. He also built actually uh, the Christian education building and the parsonage for the pastor. Because the pastor trained Bioli. Imagine Mr. Wong was telling me, Pastor, every day I tell my housemaid Bioli, tomorrow tell me another Bible story. Tomorrow tell me another Bible story. I mean, it's very humbling for a Singaporean, very wealthy guy to tell me that my disciple is my housemaid. But you will see the humility of Mr. Wong. And now he had grown and how grateful he is for Bioli. So, looking at Bioli, whoa, very skinny. Humanly speaking, you will never believe that God can use him. You know, you know, as human, we tend to judge people by the looks. By the size. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> Yeah, uh, really. No, we, we have our way of gauging. Will this be effective? Will this be good? But what is, you know, when, when you look at Bioli, even when I saw her, oh, Lord, you are really humorous. <laughs> you know, you use, you use people. Uh, I, I mean, that's why the Bible says, God will use the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. No? You, you're looking at ordinary Bioli, very ordinary lady, but God used her in an amazing way. Because ordinary Bioli is serving an extraordinary God. Amen. So when you go to the mission field, don't look at the mirror and say, will God use me? <laughs> because God definitely have called you. No? You are in this training, you have prayed about this, people have been praying for this. Therefore, uh, I believe 
uh, I believe, no, God has really called you. Amen. No, you were not just pushed by somebody to be part of the training, but really called to do that. And don't underestimate yourself, because the God of Bioli is the same God who will be with you. The God who used Bioli will be the same God who, who who will use you. Don't underestimate yourself, and no, don't 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 be ashamed of the master. I mean, Bioli was pr prayed for the employers. No? So sometimes we tend to also just go to uh, people that are, you know, like lower than us or people that we can, you know, but, you know, in your network of influence, God places you there. Just like the Apostle Paul, he was working with, who was, who was uh, Priscilla and Aquila, right? They owned the business. They were selling selling by buy and selling trading for tents and and paul was just a tent maker he was just one of the workers but he was instrumental for the employers to come to know christ and we are seeing this happening also with our overseas filipino workers god is using them so in this case bioli no so anyway bioli was so blessed also because mr Rome was very happy oh he built the house of bioli 2.4 million pesos no, as a gift of Bioli. And Mr. Wong funded a ministry in Nepal. That's uh, the training center uh, that they built. And of course, church. <laughs> this is the church they built in Kiev, in Ukraine. Wow. The training center, they won. Uh, uh, in, in, this is in Cambodia. This is the fifth church that they, they planted in Hainan, China. Because Mr. and Mrs. Wong are from Hainan, China, before they migrated to Singapore and many other projects. Now, why did this happen? Because there was one Bioli, faithful Bioli, committed Bioli, who made herself available. Bioli who never underestimated herself. A Bioli who realized she is a royal priest. A Bioli who realized that she is a minister. She is a disciple maker that she should be making disciples. I mean, discipling a very wealthy, you know, not bad. No? She was given a house. <laughs> Every time I think of Yoli, I'm just amazed. God can use ordinary people. So never underestimate yourself. In the mission field, you may be intimidated with people. Like, these are influential people. These are big people. These are, but God is there. He went way ahead of you, preparing the hearts and minds of people. So, believe God can use you. These two ladies, we sent them to Japan five years ago, more than four, five years ago. They now started four Japanese congregations. Even the Japanese churches are amazed. Hey, why is this happening? Because they, had, they hardly plant even one church in 10 years. So, they have now four Japanese congregations and it's growing. So I asked the ladies, what's your strategy? They said, we, we win the Filipino wives. And through the Filipino wives, we win the Japanese husbands. Amen. There are 220,000 Filipinos in Japan. 70% are married to Japanese. So now you know. No? So uh, they, they win the Filipino wives. And through the Filipino wives, they win the Japanese husband. Nothing is impossible with God. So here, these Filipinas, they win the, the Filipino wives, and to the Filipino wives, they win the Japanese husbands. So we call them OFW, Outstanding Filipino Wives. See, this church here was started by a Filipina married to Japanese. So uh, a mixed congregation now with Filipino-Japanese. This church was started also by a Japanese, I mean Filipina married to Japanese, and many other churches after this. So we praise God for that. No, that uh, they are planting churches as well. Now, these Filipinas are not seminary graduates. These are not seminary graduates. But just know how to share the gospel. They just know how to make disciples. They just know how to uh, make, uh, lead Bible study groups or small groups. And that's what they did. And eventually, it resulted to churches planting. I had the joy of meeting uh, one of the pastors, J.I.L., Jesus is Lord, uh, in Taiwan, 2012. 
uh, I asked him, what, what are you doing here? Uh, uh, are you a full-time missionary of JIL? And he said, no. Uh, actually, pastor, I'm a, a, a factory worker. And I said, hey, oh, what, what, you, you, you mean you came here as a factory worker, not as a church planter, not as a missionary? He said, yes. I came here as a church, uh, as a factory worker. So how did you start a church? So he told me, well, I, in our factory, I asked my co-workers, anybody of you who wants to join my prayer group? Yeah, I'm starting up a group of, of men who will be praying so we can pray for one another and pray for our families. So several joined. And they would claim Bible verses when they pray. So eventually it became a Bible study group. And now it's a church. No, uh, When I went there, 2012. Uh, last month I shared this to a group of pastors. And Bishop Leo Alconga uh, was there. I don't know if you know Bishop Leo. But he is uh, one of the known Christian leaders here. And very close to Brother Eddie in fact. He was invited during the anniversary of JIL in Taiwan. And he told me there were already 3,000 plus who attended the church anniversary. I don't know if it's just from this one church or there were other churches that were established and together they met. But uh, what is important is the church grew and started not by a missionary but by a royal priest. Were, who understood that he was a, an evangelist. He was the disciple maker there. Di ba? God placed him in that factory, not just to make dollars, but to make disciples. So he was actually telling me the secret is that they were told, whenever God brings you, don't attend a church, but start one. Wow. Wow. So he did not join the church. He started one in a factory. In March, I was in Dubai, and I was just amazed about what God is doing. There were five domestic helpers. In the Philippines, they share the gospel, they make disciples, they handle small groups. So that's their lifestyle. Wherever you bring them, they will do the same thing. Now they are in Dubai. So what to do? Oh, share. Make dis disciples. And then start the small rules. After some time, the pious day, we can bring them together. So they started the church. Now, more than 500 are attending the church. And they, are now, they now have a full-time uh, worker. And they are now beginning to reach out even to non-Filipinos in Dubai. Very simple. Royal priest uh, mindset. Did, uh, did those basic ministries. And there are more than 500 Filipino churches in Dubai alone. Uh, this guy here uh, in the middle, the one kneeling, he's an engineer actually. This is one of their, every night they have like prayer groups that meet in, the, in their place to pray. So I was there for just seven days so I cannot really be in many churches on Sunday. So I have to meet them different days and different times. So this was night time we were there. This was like a prayer meeting 10 to 12 in the evening. From work they would go and then they would just pray. Of course they don't do this every night. You know, because one group can do it, will do it Monday and another group on Tuesday. And so, but at least once a week they will do that. But this engineer started it. Not a church planter, an engineer. He also started by, by a professional. The, the, the one there with the uh, eyeglasses. Uh, I, I spoke in the church Sunday. And then this lady beside me is actually the manager of a uh, band, you know, Filipino bands that sings in five star hotels. You know? So she's the manager. And this lady is a supervisor of Emirates Airlines, uh, attendant, flight attendant. No? So a flight attendant and the manager of a uh, uh, musical band are pastoring handling a church they, they, uh, four of them in the team actually are pastoring the church so when I was there oh, we, we sat down okay what, what are your needs what are your concerns and then we tried to address help them okay these are things that can be done G give them more trainings and, and, and more skills to help them so very excited no? we're also excited because 
in spite of their busy schedule, they really make time for ministry. These are actually professionals. No? Uh, computer guys, teachers, and office workers. These are nurses, actually. These are professionals and office workers that we also train. This is in Abu Dhabi. This is a group in Dubai. No? And, and, and uh, yeah, many others. These are just part or some of, of the groups that we, we train. But so many churches were planted and established by royal priests. So disciples making disciples, leaders are producing leaders, churches planting churches. And here they are not just planting churches there, but they are actually beginning to plant churches back in the Philippines to their loved ones. I was in Texas uh, late last year and I met this guy, the one with the wife. He's a nurse, past, pastor. He's pastoring a church, uh, married to a nurse. It was their church anniversary, so they invited me to speak. So I was so excited when I met them and began to understand the history of the church. So this is the church anniversary for about half, they have more than 80 people. Half of them are in the church, half of them are in the hospital. Not because they are sick, because most of the members are nurses or working in the hospital. See, he, Pastor Pete is a nurse. The wife is a nurse. So where they work, that's their mission field. So they share the gospel. They disciple. So two of them, they have many disciples, so they started the church. More than 80. They own the facility. They don't have debts. They, 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 they bought it cash. They have money. No? So nurses started it. No, they, they were not trained as missionaries. They were not, never trained as church planters, really. But, you know, they, they just obey the Lord. This guy is a public school teacher, married to a nurse. So they also started the church. The following Sunday, I was in another church in another city in southern Texas. And they have started the church. More than 120 attending the church. And they own the facility. They bought the facility. Nurses and teachers are well paid in, the, in America. So they have money. Who are the members? Teachers, nurses, and of course their families and friends. Because that's their network. So where you live, where you work, where you study, if every believer will just have that mindset, there's a higher purpose, that will make a big difference. So teach this when you start churches, when you start missionary work. Manila Metropolitan Baptist Church, the pastor is a very good friend of mine. So when I visited the church, there is the lobby and there's the world map. No? And there are cities and countries in, uh, that, that's lighted. So like Dubai, you know, uh, and then uh, Australia, Singapore. Right? So I asked the pastor, what do you mean? What's the significance of this? And he told me, every city or country that's there, we have a church. He said, we have 210 churches already. In fact, he told me, uh, we have to update all of this because many have not been listed yet. So 210 so I asked him, how many of these were planted by your missionaries? And he said, less than 10. So what happened? The more than 200 were planted by their members who became overseas Filipino workers and their members who migrated. So I asked the pastor, how did that happen? He said, we are telling our members, you need to learn here how to share the gospel. You need to learn how to make disciples. You need to learn here how to start small groups, Bible study groups. And wherever God brings you, you, did, you do the same. So what was the result? Churches. I mean, not low-cost budget. They did not spend for sending missionaries. They just spent investing in the lives of people, training and equipping them. And uh, those members who are now working overseas, and our started churches are the ones actually helping the mother church. We go to their mother church in Manila. It's so beautiful. 
royal priest mindset. Every disciple making disciples, every leader reproducing leaders, every church planting churches. If that's the mindset, this can happen. Now just imagine if all churches in the Philippines will do this. More than one million of the OFWs are believers. If they will do this, there should be so much churches planted by Filipinos. And others are coming back here, so they should be able to help plant churches lo locally in the Philippines. So more than 200 churches already. So you see the, the importance, if we really understand why we exist, why the church exists, that we are not a monument, we are a movement, that we should reproduce, that we should grow, that we should multiply. These are the concepts that we need to understand and incorporate.